Coming up on All About Android, Ann Pruitt joins me and Florence Ion. Unfortunately, Ron isn't here this week. We'll see him next week. We discuss the new Snapdragon 865. Uh, apparently, Pixel phones will now get a feature drop on the regular. Google's ADT3 Android TV dongle, a developer device. Uh, Google Photos gets messaging. Motorola's Motorola One Hyper phone. Your email and a whole lot more coming up next on All About Android. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Hello and welcome to All About Android, episode 450. Nice round number there. Recorded on Tuesday, December 10th, 2019. Your weekly source for the latest news, hardware, and apps for the Android faithful. I'm Jason Howell. And I'm Florence Lyon. Whoa, is it that time? Is it already that time this week? Is it already Tuesday? It's already Tuesday. Whoa. Welcome to welcome to yet another Tuesday. Yeah, yet another. Yet another it's just a regular Tuesday. <laughs> yet another All About Android with yet another appearance by awesome mm. Twit host. I was going to call you a guest, but you're really, you're a host. I'm a host. Yeah, you're a host that guests every once in a while on this show. <laughs> I've, I've been a host for a couple months now, <laughs> now fortunately. Yeah. It's good to have you here. Thank you for hopping in. Appreciate it. Yep. Ron uh, could not be with us today. He will be returning as far as I know next week. So you won't have to wait that long. He's, He's busy. probably catching some naps too, right? I don't know. Actually, I, actually, now that I think about it, I don't actually know what, what Ron is doing. I think he's just busy with work or something or maybe his family. I don't know. Yeah, you know what, Ron? You do you. He's I'll being very important somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Being important for someone else. Uh, and we actually, this is this is quite a news heavy week, I have to say. There's a lot of stuff to talk about as I scroll through here. I'm like, oh, this is chock full. So why don't we get right into it, starting, Victor, with the news. We're chock full of news that's important to us, there we are. not anyone else. Here's Android News. <laughs> the people who listen or watch this show would <laughs> consider themselves part of us. <laughs> Everyone else would be like, yeah, you're right. This news is very much not important to me. I well, if you, if, I love Victor. If you're listening to the pre-show, <laughs> you would think that wild turkeys was important. Yeah, um, well, depends on who you ask. Yeah, wild turkeys. We're, not, we're not, not talking about the whiskey, folks. <laughs> not talking about the whiskey. I don't know. Wild turkey is pretty important on, on those special occasions, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I prefer a maker's mark, but anyway. Uh, okay. Uh, Make, uh, maker's mark, is all right. it's all right. This is an evening show, by the way, so <laughs> I'm know. always like... You know what? I hope the kids aren't watching. Cheers. Yeah. Well, you know, I've I've kind of had just like a, a blah day. Um, I'm realizing now wild turkey might be the solution. That w- I've already I've already told you that. Yeah, I know you've mentioned this. It works this is- like a champ. <laughs> <laughs> it's just I haven't gone there today. And I'm throwing that out into the ether. We'll see what happens. Uh, maybe there's a delivery service for whiskey. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, top news this week. I don't know if it's still top, but it was definitely uh, big news last week. Qualcomm unveiled its upcoming premium chipset at its Snapdragon Summit in <clears throat> Maui. <laughs> Where was that Hawaii, again? Hawaii, Maui. Wow. The the day that I, I was like coming. I like that that happened. It started like exactly the day before. Well, people started arriving the day before you were to leave. Yeah. So really no you could have just stayed and See? weaseled your way into <laughs> if, it. If I had some good PR contacts, I could have extended my vacation another three days, turned it into a work trip. I, I could see it now. You're going through the airport and people are walking by like this. Oh, <laughs> Jason, no. <laughs> oh, Jason's, Jason's here. Wait a minute. Why is he walking in that direction? He, and, and with a whole family towing yes. behind him. <laughs> is that his news team? I had no idea. Uh, Snapdragon 865 was the big announcement, the big chipset announcement anyways. And usually at this event, this event is where we find out about the top of the line next generation Snapdragon processor that we will see in all big premium Android phones next year. Mm-hmm. And so that's what the, the 865 is. Uh, big features of the 865. Uh, I would say one of the marquee features here is 5G. This event was, you know, very largely around 5G with the 865 processor, as well as the kind of lower tier but still pretty good 765 and 765G. Both of them support 5G uh, right out of the box. They do it differently though. The 865 supports 5G with uh, the X55 modem that's paired with it on the on the chipset. So 
it's not an integrated uh, 5G modem into the chip. It still kind of requires that connection to the X55 modem. Uh, the seven, Snapdragon 765 is a fully integrated uh, modem, Snapdragon X52 modem on the chip itself. It's just they offer, they support different speeds. So if you're getting the 865, you're getting up to 7.5 gigabits per second, which is insane to think mm. that these are speeds that we might someday see on our smartphones. Good uh, grief. If you're getting the 765, the integrated modem on that chip goes up to 3.5 gigabits per second, which is still screaming fast. Mm -hmm. It's just half the speed of, of what you get on the top tier. Uh, which I think, and you know, there are other features when you talk about those in a second, but just taking a, a, a step back on the 5g aspect of this, this is kind of a big moment for 5g. 5g is still this technology that's looming that will someday be a big deal, but really isn't quite yet. It's just something you hear about. That's something about you hear it. about, <laughs> but I don't know that I expected this soon for a chipset that's going to be in so many phones next year to right out of the box, support it. Carriers, uh, you know, manufacturers, really? well, manufacturers have no reason not to support 5G now. Right. And I, I think I was expecting another year of like waffling around it. I think and that's it, more along here, the lines. Here it's just going to be, it's there already. Yeah, I think that's more along the lines of, of a lesson learned from pre previous years, previous iterations of, you know, all right, we have this out here ready to go. So let's go ahead and put the pressure on yeah. those OEMs to go ahead and start utilizing this chipset. You know? yeah. Even though there's no infrastructure for it, like right. anywhere. And also, right. and by the way, has anybody checked next door lately? Because it's basically all conspiracy theorists with oh, tinfoil boy. hats going, 5G is going to destroy our brains. And yeah. Yeah, I've heard that. I've heard that. that yeah, I, it's going rampant. I'm like seeing I'm seeing it all over the Internet now. It's um, oh, it's wild. Fear, but I, I will doubt. say like when. I heard this chip news last week. I was just thinking, well, might as well follow the marketing. That's where the mar the marketing started there in late 2018 when Samsung, I think Sa <sighs> my brain could be remembering something incorrectly, but I think Samsung had announced 5G capability, at least for the foldable phone. Mm. And because that was mentioned, like the minute a big company like Samsung mentions it, it goes just like, it's in the canon, you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's officially a part of. Remember you know. that time when the Thunderbolt was like the only phone on Heck 4G? Yeah, I do. You know, do we I wish I had known you, you were going to bring up the brain. Thunderbolt. <laughs> I would have brought it in here. It's at my desk. Do, do we want a repeat of that? You know, why not have that availability out there and ready to go? And yeah. not just be limited to the folks at Verizon and their one, air quotes, flagship phone at the time. Yeah. Because that yeah. thing was a brick, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was uh, the, yes, it was. That was the first four G Verizon to carry a phone brick back then. That's it true. Was, we were we were way more accustomed to brick yeah, carrying. Yeah, we were more accustomed to brick carrying. Wade <laughs> County is a little more colorful with his description in the chat room, but we won't say what that word. It was. did have a kickstand, though. <laughs> it did. It had a, a, an integrated yes, kickstand. Right. I remember that. For the all stand. the four eighty by three twenty screen resolution video, oh, dang your it. little heart take in. Dang it! I Too wish well. I had known we would go to Thunderbolt. I, I wish well. I had the battery phone. life on a good day. Yeah. The <laughs> Battery life was <laughs> god awful uh, on that, but still 4G. Right. And uh, I, I, I think what I, what I, what I see here though is just that knowing that the 865 is going to be in just an insane amount of phones to begin with, top tier mm -hmm. phones, left, right, and center. That's just how the Android ecosystem works. Top tier Snapdragon is going to be in the premium phones next year. Consumer and there's wins. no real reason not to support 5G because right out of the box it does. So whether the networks are there. Uh, whether the supported antennas uh, and, and frequencies are actually baked in by the manufacturers and the carriers into the phone, the hardware is there to support it. Right. And uh, that's, I feel like that's kind of a, a big moment for 5G. That's definitely an affirming moment for the technology. Whether it'll be utilized, that's another story. And does it tack on extra cost? to the processor that's unnecessary coming out so early. That's another question. Right. Well, time will tell on that, but I, I think we're going to be a lot better off again. I, I still think this is one of those lesson learned kind of mm -hmm. things from, from the past. Sure. Now, other aspects of this Spectra mm -hmm. 480 um, is, is part of this, and that's really around image processing, uh, two gigapixel per second processing speed. 
And so one way of describing this, uh, R Michelle Rahman from XDA Developers was mm -hmm. on Tech News Weekly last week, and he set up this as a scenario. 4K HDR video capture while also simultaneously taking 64 megapixel image snapshots at the same time. Because right now when you're recording video, you know you can take those shots. Right. Uh, yep. But they're always a lower resolution. Yeah, or it freezes totally. Or it freezes. <laughs> it just doesn't look. Yeah, it, it breaks down. This would yeah. be like high res everything. You know what I mean? So you're not sacrificing on your camera shots while you're video recording 4K HDR video. Uh, it also allows for 720p, 960 frames per second video that can be recorded limitlessly. So it doesn't run into these thermal issues. It doesn't slow down. Doesn't that was my next post question. I read that and was thinking... How is this not going to heat up too fast with all of this capabilities? But I guess they've written it out well they, enough to be yeah. super duper efficient and not be a burning brick in your hand as you're trying to stay yeah. out of the shot. Yeah, totally. <laughs> That's what they say anyways. Uh, support for up to 200 megapixel stills, still images. Why you need that, I guess, it remains to be seen. But who well, knows? Maybe they're doing the quad Instagram pixel thing, star. cutting that down to 50 megapixel shots. If you want to be an Instagram star, you want all those pixels, right? <laughs> you want every pore on your <laughs> face uh, to be viewable. Uh, 3D Sonic Max is another part of this. This is a 17 times larger sensor for, for in-display fingerprint sensor. So, Can we uh, see that demo? I saw that you linked to a demo in the dock and I want to see this thing because apparently it's supposed to be better than what we have now. I did link to a demo. I will admit I did not watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I read through the article and I meant to watch it, but I, but I didn't. Oh, do they, uh, oh, I, do I they have, is there, well, is there a video demo? Is know, it just now that we're a looking at it, I don't know that there is a demo. Like oh, a video JK. Demo. It's more of a hands-on. Um, but, but the idea here is that it's a larger sensor area. So mm -hmm. you aren't, as required to hunt for that single dot on the display that your fingerprint will unlock from, mm -hmm. which I find really annoying. That, you know, it's like three or four tries to get it perfectly right. This is a much larger area. Yeah, I, I still don't necessarily care for the end screen. No, I, neither do I. I'd rather it just be, you know, on the back as an additional piece of hardware. It just seems a little more logical and, and less of a problem issue down the road, yeah. in my opinion. I don't see as much of a, a need for it right now because it's so futsy. But but if they expand that area to where I can just place my finger on the display and not have to worry about where I'm dropping that right. on there and it Making actually it works, easier. then you know I'll like it more. Making it uh, a little easier. Uh, they're also saying that it's large enough to support two fingerprints. So if you wanted to get extra security, you could have like two fingerprints at once. So three people are going to do that. Right. Yeah, I mean, who's yeah, totally. Who's gonna do Futsy that? is such a great word, by the way. I'm still like, <laughs> it's really. A, I as it came out of my mouth, I was like, oh no, is that a word I shouldn't say? It's not like one no, of those it's, words it's that a like wonderful word. Well, okay, played. good, good. Um, I'm happy to add new colorful language to your vocabulary. <laughs> uh, and faster authentication rate, uh, AI mm. engine improvements. The example that they showed was creating a transcript of someone who's speaking into the phone while simultaneously translating that into another language, all of that happening in real time. Okay. That's pretty interesting. That would be cool. We'll see about that. We'll see about that. <laughs> that would be cool, for real. And then the Snapdragon 765 and 765G, the G stands for gaming, so it's, um, some improvements mm. focused on like gaming performance and stuff. But this is kind of like the step down from the 865, um... And like I said, a fully integrated uh, X52 modem on the chip there. So, yeah, that's what we'll see in next year's premium smartphones. What do we think? Are these good improvements? They sound pretty interesting. Isn't it what we expect, though, at this yeah, point exactly. in time? I don't know. I don't know what I expected. I mean, I always expect better, yeah. but define better. Right. I feel like this is actually a pretty solid list of better. Faster clock speed, better battery life, better processing of your multimedia mm. that's what we want every year right? yeah yeah fresh and, new marketing terms ah <laughs> fresh uh they uh, also they also announced the gpu drivers on these and future snapdragon chipsets will be updatable via the play store right. so which is pretty that's, cool it's yeah. pretty neat yeah it's pretty neat yeah again and there were other things flow 
There was. Um, so another announcement from Qualcomm's Tech Summit uh, that we haven't yet covered is the support for mobile driver's license and electronic IDs. I know oh, what you okay. must be wondering. Oh, my gosh, it's finally time. Uh, where has this been? At least especially here in, in the U.S. Android R, whatever, I guess, what is it, uh, Android 11, will have an Android, wait, QPR. <laughs> <laughs> P-Q-R. I needed to make sure I was <laughs> yep. going down the alphabet the right way. Uh, Android R will have an Android Identity Credential API to tap into and enable the ability to have a mobile driver's license and electronic ID. XDA had noticed this earlier than the announcement. Um, you know, they're very good at catching on to those things, of course. But then there was a nice little official, like, buttoned up, hey, this is going to be happening. Um you know, add this to the marquee of features. Yeah, Look this could possibly this. hit the uh, hit with the Android 11 beta, which, based on what we saw from the Android 10 beta, could happen as early as March, or who knows, guys? Maybe because this is like really involves the securing of credentials. I wouldn't be surprised if this wasn't something that came out like at the actual release. Yeah, of totally. Android 11 versus beta. You know what I mean? That's our kind of like totally. That's a great caches. point. Yeah, don't put it in yeah. beta. <laughs> Please don't <laughs> rely on this for all of your <laughs> yeah your driver's license storing storing your driver's license data in here. Rely on it in our beta. That's totally buttoned up and, and official. <laughs> Not at all. I wonder what Mister Gibson thinks about it from security. Yeah, yeah. I'd be really curious to hear what his thoughts what his on this. Are. Yeah. I mean, they make it happen, and and the thing that has been a real bummer is not having transit cards. Uh, you know, mm. like that ability on an Android device, and I just would love. I mean, you know, these days, if I'm running to the grocery store, which is literally like three blocks down the street, I'm still getting in my car just because it's kind of still, you know, in the suburbs. It's still kind of far um, to go problems. on foot. <laughs> um, but I usually only go with my phone because I, I just have Google Play on there. My phone and my car keys. Like right. you don't want to bring the extra bulk. And not to mention like let's say you forget your wallet at home. I mean to have that information on you. Yeah. Yeah. Like, as, as like a backup. I do think. Sort of. Yeah. I do mm -hmm. think it's important. But would this totally. work you know? at, the, at your favorite bar? <laughs> And that's a, you know, yeah, that's a good question. Is, I just don't think so. You know? No, that's I'm, a great question. I need to see some ID, sir. Yeah. They yes. ask me that all the time. Here, no, it's real. Well, it's no, real. A, that's, you should feel honored to continue no, to have I'm your kidding, driver's license don't. asked for. They, they yes. ask Queen Pruitt that. They never ask me. Oh, jeez. <laughs> um, uh, B, when they look at licenses now, at least in the state of California, there you have to shine a black light on it and it'll show you like right. a little imprint. Right. And I think a lot of other states have implemented this too as a way to deter from kids like me using fake IDs. I know <laughs> such, no I such thing. I was young once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but back then there was no way to check that. But I guess... At the same time, there has to be some sort of authentication involved yeah. what with the smartphone do? where you couldn't, you know, just fake that. I don't know. <laughs> you could just take a screenshot of your fake ID. Right. That's like, oh, very easy to do now. You know, yeah. just <laughs> slap it into Photoshop or whatever and boom, you got it on your phone. Yeah. I mean, this is the Android Identity Credential API that would enable this. So. It's definitely Excuse more me, than just... Excuse me, do you take Android identity IDs? <laughs> yes. This is my Android identity. I'd like to come Here's in and have some gin. My Android identity credential. Here, you, here it is. Here Those you go. Those kinds aren't allowed here. <laughs> <laughs> It'll yeah. be like a sign. It's just, it's like the Android, you know, the bug droid is just like with a big X through it. And that's like the first time in what, 12 years that Android has gone. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> but yeah. I think you're right though, Flo. This is probably not going to be on any sort of beta uh, whatsoever. I can't imagine them them doing that. Uh, certainly not allowing people to rely on it, but but I know very little about like how this this technology is developing and how it well, operates. So I'm control. curious to learn more. But it does this now? Again, even yeah. thinking about it beyond the bar, what do, what happens when you get pulled over? How are the law enforcement going right. to be able to make sure that it's usually you because they have to take it from you and punch in whatever the identification is, um, so they can scan you and make sure you look okay and whatnot, but. You just going to hand over your phone? 
I'm right. Not. Yeah, right. Here's my unlocked phone so that you can nope. <laughs> take a look at the driver's license Ooh, that's on it. And that's a really good whatever point. Whatever else you want to do with it. Do it. <laughs> yeah, that's a really good point. Uh, I mean, the reality is we don't know how it's going to operate mm-hmm. at this point. We don't right. know what the, the systems uh, are going to be in place. I'm sure if and when it happens, like this totally seems like one of those technologies that like, sure, we're early, but there seems like a lot of other aspects, like real world aspects that would have to be ironed out mm-hmm. for, let's say, police you know, departments, police precincts mm-hmm. to feel comfortable mm-hmm. taking your phone, uh, taking a you know some sort of credential off your phone and accepting that in no, place officer, of the here's legacy. Here's a hologram. Here, yeah, take the yeah, hologram. Totally. So I would imagine, <laughs> I, I, would, I wouldn't I would be surprised if it took longer for this to mature. As far as that's did concerned, you, but did you guys hear my festive doorbell? By the way, no. What did it do? Be no. Uh, I have the winter nest doorbell oh. selected. Somebody was just at my door. I think dropping off a holiday package. So is it like uh, uh, bells jingling and ho ho? Yes, ho? bell jinglings okay. and the and the uh, the clippity clappity of the reindeer hooves. <laughs> oh, okay, that yes. works. That works. It might be for all the snow noise. that's outside. Right yes. Now. Oh, man, all that white stuff falling from the sky. (laughs) Google is now releasing the first of who knows how many what they call feature drops uh, Mm -hmm. for the Pixel phones. Featured in the first update coming this month to Pixel 4 include the ability to filter out robocalls um, prior to the phone ring. So they've been able to identify it, and that's been working well on the phones. But now you can set it up when this update happens so that your phone doesn't even ring. You don't even know that it happened. It just kind of boop goes off into the ether. Um, let's see here. What else? Portrait blur in Google photos. You can go in after the fact. If you, for, if you didn't do a oh, portrait good. mode shot, I, I like the after the fact option. Yeah. You know. Yeah. That's nice. Uh, and you know, I'll be curious to see the quality of that. The demo they show of course looks perfect, but that's, always, that's how it goes. <laughs> Auto framing in Duo that keeps the face your face centered um, in your video as you move around. That's cool. So it's kind of neat. It can zoom in. It can also zoom out and frame in a second person as they enter the shot. So it's kind of like a dynamically moving camera that follows what AI has determined is the important thing in the shot. Yeah, I'd, I'd be curious to see this because since we've moved here from the Carolinas, we've used Duo a lot, oh, a lot more that's often. Nice. And, oh, okay. You know, even. The less tech savvy folks in the family are now on yeah, Duo. So. It's pretty easy to use. Yeah. I totally agree. I've I've used it with my parents, and it was not difficult. It was wait. You guys have managed to get your Apple using family members to use Duo because I'm having a hard time getting the if if it's not FaceTime, it's Skypey. My family ain't got oh. no money, so they're not buying Apple devices. <laughs> Yeah, and I, well, I didn't have. The thing is, though, those old those old iPhones still have yeah. like FaceTime on them, so yeah. it's like it's like no, built FaceTime in. Is really, yeah. it's very. I have used Duo with my parents, but usually I I know I'm going to have the best luck by opening up my MacBook Pro yeah. and calling them on, on FaceTime, <laughs> and that well, way the whole family Duo. can see too. Mm. You know, that it's on a I screen. have smart displays mm. all around the house, like. You know, like I want to talk to you while we're in the kitchen. I don't, you know. Yeah. You want to talk to them <laughs> while you're doing something talk else. Moment. Yes. This is, I'm getting stuff done. And while I am, I might as well we're talk to you. We're multitasking you. <laughs> so you have like 35% of, of my attention right now. I hope that's good enough. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> no, I'm only saying that because I know what you're talking about. I've, I've been yeah, there. no, I know. But after you said the 35% thing, I laughed because. That's pretty, that's pretty anyway. low percentage. It's probably more like 65, 70%. <laughs> but you know. Depends on the task. We're doing a show. Uh, Pixel 2 and up through 3A are also getting some features. They're getting the record app, live captions coming to the 3 and 3A. There's focus mode finally rolling out to phones, also flip to shh. And then new assistant is coming to users in the UK, Canada, Ireland, Singapore, and Australia. And they also mentioned some updates to memory management. So apparently this whole, Mm. you know, like uh, feature drop update thing for Pixel phones is going to be a regular occurrence, bringing more features to the phones that are outside of like the OS level Mm -hmm. updates. I don't know what's really different between this and just updating the app in the Play Store, though. You know what I mean? Like Mm. the Duo updates, like that that could just be a Duo app update, right? Yeah, but you lose the exclusivity, though. Oh, I see. (laughs) Okay, yeah, you're right. 
But oh, yeah, nothing's ever exclusive point, yeah. for very long with Google Pixel phones. Uh, yeah. Eventually, well, they open it up for everybody. Don't else, remind so. me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're on the Pixel train. You're 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 in the clear. <laughs> All right, that is that. Flo, you got the email. We've got an email. Oh, yeah, uh, so this one comes from Chuck, and uh, you know, I was reading it, and I realized Chuck has a point there. So. Here's Chuck's point. Isn't it ironic that no one wants their Windows 10 updates immediately, but everyone seems to want their Android updates immediately? Not me. Mm. I've been in the IT world for decades, and there's one thing I've learned in that time is to let others be the testers of OS release updates. I'm thankful for those that buy the Pixels because I can watch from afar their pain and punishment for being the early adopters of a new version of Android. (laughs) My phone is very important to me, and I don't want to deal with the problems that I see when the Pixel people upgrade their OS. So maybe I'm more mainstream than the phone geeks in this world, but count me as one person that appreciates Samsung's thoroughness when deploying Android upgrades. Don't get me wrong, I appreciate the monthly security upgrades and install those regularly, but there's simply no new Android features that's worth risking on my phone. Yeah, they're cool and all, but I can wait. Thanks so much for your being on the front line with the latest Android distribution, but as the British Army found out in 1776, it's not always pleasant being on the front line. Regards. (laughs) Wow. I mean, I was reading when I when I saw Chuck's mention of Windows 10, I realized that this is, you know, Chuck reminded me of why I never shut down my PC Mm. because I avoid getting those updates until I'm ready to install the Windows 10 updates or I manually do it. Uh, And it does. I mean, it's true to some extent degree about the Android OS updates and what they do. Uh, And I also agree that I think users should, you know, feel like Samsung has their back in even though these updates are getting late, you know, they're still late compared to when we get them on the Pixel. Uh, At least Samsung is thorough. But I would wonder how much faster they could be if they would not put their own spin. I think the, the big crux of the issue for us Android users is that what you're getting on the Pixel, that's like what Google was developing on. That's what they're working on internally. So that's why that's going to get pushed to us a lot faster. And so I trust it coming from that source. But when it comes to other sources, the frustration is that there's so much stuff on top of it that has to get fine-tuned. But it's like, well, okay, I guess this remains... It's really, again, the F word, fragmentation, which we've been talking a lot about these last couple of weeks, surprisingly. Yeah, I should also mention, this kind of ties in with the email, Galaxy S10 series is getting uh, Android 10 effect uh, starting today. Nice. So, which is, I mean, for... You know, I thought that was only overseas. I thought America, Americans still have to wait until 2020. Oh, you're right, UK rollout. Yeah. Apologies. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, this is... Well, wait a minute now. Let's see here. UK rollout as of December 2nd, December 12th. Okay, yeah, no, you're right. This is uh, UK, India, Kuwait, Brazil, Caribbean, Greece, Israel, Netherlands, Norway, UAE. Um, okay, well, I think I think overall, though, Samsung, like this seems to be a little bit faster. Maybe my memory is off, but this seems to be a little bit faster than when Samsung normally does when it comes out, when, you know, a new version of Android comes out. So, but this, this would be one reason why, you know, like, like the emailer said, why some people do like Sam, Samsung is one example. They take the time they need to make sure that it happens right. Or that's the implication. I'm seeing lots of squinchy face from you, Ant. <laughs> this, this, this may be the one time I feel like a one percenter. Cause I <laughs> never, I never have all of these OS upgrade issues that people yeah, write yeah, about no, and I, complain about. Um, yeah. Even in my own household, um, we'll we'll Between all the updates phones. and yeah. people will, the, one of the boys will have an issue and I won't, or you know, the Queen Pruitt will have an issue and I won't. Right. Uh, even with Windows 10 or what have you, I, I never see any of these issues. Other than that time I was fortunate enough to host Windows Weekly and it updated and decided to just stay asleep for most of the show. But, <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love it when that happens. But I, I I never see this stuff that people are are talking about as far as things breaking and being out of whack. When I see things out of whack is usually the app itself, not necessarily the OS. Mm. You know? Or it's yeah. in beta. 
or the OS is in beta. That's that's when my headaches. And I don't run. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't install beta on these anymore either. I remember the exactly. days of rooting and rhyming and all of that stuff. But now I don't even want the headache of of beta. You yeah. know, just just when you're ready, Google just send it out. I'm not even going to sit there and request the update like a lot of people do. Ah, uh, remember those days. I, I I just wait. When it's there, it's there. If I hit Please, that button more, I'll be more Please. likely to get the update. No, it never worked <laughs> like that. I exist with my pixel phones on the beta channel and yes, you, you do. even i feel like it's pretty darn stable yeah like, i never hear you complaining maybe, other than maybe i'm hardened though other than when your phone <laughs> wakes up at random because you said the g word but yeah but <laughs> yeah but is that because of an os update or is that just because my you know i've trained my assistant wrong or it's an assistant error you just have knows? great resonance coming out of those pipes yes oh home. i know my voice sounds like everybody's uh you know wakes up all phones um, maybe I'm just hardened. Maybe hardened to the pain. <laughs> maybe so used to it that like it's no big deal anymore. I don't I know. Mean, I've seen Nexus really cues in, by your desk. I've seen oh, a bunch yeah. of old Google. Was it the? Um, I saw the old Nexus. I saw the uh, Google Glass. So yeah, you might be hardened because you've been through some pain, man. <laughs> I feel no. I feel that. I I feel that as also a Android user from the beginning, like. I just don't. Okay, something went wrong. Who cares? I'll fix it. Yeah, like that's how I feel about it. Yeah, okay. and we and we're very used to and good and effective at just figuring out the fix and moving yeah. on. It's just it's battery dwelling. life. Battery yeah. life needs to be better, and that I have very little control over. Actually, we th we feel like we have control. Install this app. Ra you know, mm -mm. ramp mm -mm. ramp back the use of, yeah. of things. Uh, mm -mm. You know, you can make I all don't these have little changes over that you how big think. the battery is. So, so, no. with, so with this last update, you have not had decent battery life. Uh, no, I'm still using the Pixel Three, and no, my phone is still like ready to die by the by three o'clock. And I work from home. Oh, <laughs> you don't wow, go anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. ridiculous, right? Forty percent. Well, <laughs> Let's see. Oh, it's one of those moments where we all report where we're at. I'm at 38% on my Pixel 4 and, XL. And that'll get you through the end of the day. Right? Yeah, that'll get me through the end of the day. So again, I'm, I'm still feeling like that 1% because I never have these. Ever since we've gotten that Android 10 update, my battery has been exponential. Maybe you're blessed. Oh, I know and, I am. And we're, <laughs> and we're not. <laughs> we're just... <laughs> um, now, 38% would get me through the end of the day based on how I use the phone when I'm at work and then I go home, blah, blah, blah. If this was, you know, if it was 6 o'clock and I was going out for the evening and I had 38%, it might be a different story. Yeah, if I, I were doing. driving home from really Twit, what you're doing. the one hour that I have to drive home, I, it would not last me the whole way on Android Auto, 38%. But would you plug in? Like, would, do you plug in when it's mounted or when it's in your car? I, do, I don't like plugging it in because it gets so darn hot. It's hot, When yeah. it's like... I don't, I don't like doing it, but obviously I will if it's, you if know, you dire need. Yeah. But the, what if I didn't have the cord in my car that day? Yeah. Or oh, something? yeah. You know what I mean? Totally. Yep. So. Whole lot of questions. I envy Ant. I, I want whatever battery situ, battery juju that Ant has going on. I, I just ran it. the update. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> I ran the update. I edit photos from time to time on it. I watch a lot of YouTube yeah. on it. It's. You have a wireless charger at your desk? I do not. Oh, you should get that because then you just set it down. And but I don't right need up. it. I know. I, <laughs> I, I know. I'm not saying you need it. But <laughs> I do have a wireless charger at home, but there, I haven't even well used it. It's just sitting there. But yeah, yeah. I think I've told you before, there's been times where I would forget to plug it up at night before going to bed. Yeah. You know, and come in and it's like at 12%, like, oh, crap, no battery today. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, oh crap! Guess I'm gonna go through my day. You know, <laughs> I guess I could just cancel this day. My yeah. phone that doesn't have any battery. No Sorry, What's you can't the point? come in. No email. Didn't charge my phone last night. What's the point? <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you for uh, writing in, Chuck. We appreciate your email and all of your emails when you send us an email at AAA at twit TV. Uh, we might read it on the show like we did with Chuck's. All right, and now it's time for some hardware. The hardest of wear. Wow, wow, wow. Starting with the next generation of Android TV. Android 10 is coming to Android TV. Mm. 
Mm. Um, although it, there's no real user facing features as part of this update, uh, just kind of behind the scenes performance security stuff. But Google did also announce the new ADT three Android TV dongle this is a developer device. Uh, reportedly, this is actually produced by ASCII, which, uh, or ASCII, which is a subsidiary of ASUS. It mm. has a quad-core ARM Cortex-A53 CPU, 2 gigs of DDR3 memory, 4K HDR at 6 frames per six frames, 60 frames per second. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's really the future yeah. when it's 6 frames per second <laughs> uh, over HDMI 2.1. So nothing like particularly amazing i feel like we've seen like uh bits and pieces of this hit like through the fcc and even patents and stuff in the last year or so so this is what it is it's a developer device the adt devices usually are um but supposedly google is expected to release a hero device sometime next year for android tv so maybe this is a hint of what a might be the hero device yeah That'll be interesting. I you know a that. Hero. I'm going no, well, out here to the end. Of, okay, sorry. <laughs> I know what you meant. Um, <laughs> I'm just. I was just thinking because remember Google had had us over while well, I went uh, for us to go check out the Android TV showcase. Yes, yes. Um, Talk and Mount at the Mountain View campus blessed. and. Everything that they showed was third party. It was not first party. And it kind of never made sense that there were all these Chromecast devices and this UI existed and support for this existed, but Google didn't have its own like internally worked on product or some sort of like benchmark they use to yeah. work on it. Um, so I am excited to hear this because I, as you all know, I'm constantly complaining about the Mi Box. <laughs> Sorry, mm. Xiaomi. It's just, it's been, I got what I paid for. Yeah. Yeah. It's 40 bucks. I got what I paid for. Yeah. So, yeah. uh, now you just need to get yourself an Nvidia shield. Uh, no, but at this point, day. why would I do that when I, I can just wait? I mean, I'm fine. Yeah, I, I got true. my YouTube TV. I got my Plex. I got my uh, sponsor of this show. Yes, uh, you know, I've got my Disney Plus. Like, it's fine. It works. It's just the little things that I want to do that I'm just like, okay, why? And so I would love to see, like, what Google, how polished it would be coming out of Google versus, yeah. you know. Yeah. Version I, I would love 1. to see that. 2, though, not version 1.0, right? 1.2 of what? Version 1.2 of what Google is offering up. The first iteration is probably. Oh, right. We're Because we're talking oh, right. about. We never <laughs> right. jump into the pool. Yeah, it's true. We just read an email about that. So. That's true. It's true. It's true. <laughs> yeah, but this is all about Android. We're a bunch of fanboys and girls yes, here. So yes. it's fine. So we, we do <laughs> well, it. We, I we did, take the pain so you don't have to. I did yeah. enjoy Android TV before um, I ended up turning the. Is it the Xbox One that we have? Yeah, the Xbox One is pretty much what we watch television through now. Interesting. But, okay. but before that, it was um, some version of Android TV a couple of years ago, and I thought it was okay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. it, it, it still could use a little bit of polish, but just to be able to sit down and watch something, it was easy enough. Yeah. Um, but this whole dongle thing, I don't particularly think anything about it because of having set top boxes. I, I like the idea of the set top box being there and not getting bumped into and snapping an HDMI port and stuff like that. Just, mm -hmm. but that's just me. Yeah. You know? Want to like put a USB shield. in it. You know, the shield is another good, good option um, that you reviewed. And yeah, that, that really looks interesting. I don't need it, but it, it looks nice. I Yeah, I would say if you were going in that direction, maybe consider the extra $50 and get the Shield Pro. I think it's a the Shield TV Pro is a, is a good upgrade to the Shield mm -hmm. for what you, um, you know, for, for what you get out of it. You get just a little bit more and it's actually, it is, it is definitely better and worth it. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, the Shield's kind of like the reigning supreme uh, Android TV box as far as that's concerned. Yeah. I'll be curious to see what Google could put up against that and how it would compete. Yeah. Now, it, with with Android TV, regards to that, um, do you do you folks consider it mainstream now? No. Okay. Sorry. No. What, what can 
the folks at Google and Alphabet do to make it more mainstream? You know, because follow yeah. Apple, get get um, do what Apple's doing, get content, uh, exclusive content, things like that. Because right now it's just a vessel. It's just like an app vessel, which is fine for me and everyone here and everyone watching this show. But it's not that's not like what brings in the eyes for um, like to have somebody go out and buy specifically something with Android TV on it. There's no like everybody does exclusivity now when it comes Mm -hmm. to like living room entertainment. Like it's about how to keep you in your living room and Google has to has to play that game. Yeah. It maybe do something with the Play Store with play movies and TV, you know. I don't know. I use I use that to rent, which is part right. of the reason I went Android TV is because I'm already like renting inside that ecosystem. So right. I was like, well, might as well stick with it. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, most of the time Android TV comes built in to a TV, so sometimes people don't even realize like that's just what they're using. Right. But you well, know. and to that to that degree, I would I would maybe push back a little bit and say that Android TV I I would say is in in many ways mainstream. Okay, but it's not mm, necessarily mm. a platform that people are like I'm gonna like seek out an Android TV box. Again, yeah, that's what I mean. as, yeah. as with Android, you know, on smartphones, a lot of people don't really aren't really as aware about the fact that it has Android. They're just they want a smartphone they that just does got things. A system running on a and phone. And same it. thing goes with with a lot of TVs that have Android TV built in or, mm-hmm. or whatever. Android TV exists on a lot of things. I don't. I I'm curious to know how many people sought out right. specifically. I wondered, yeah, I wondered TV. how many people actually realized that. Um, yeah, I, I haven't been TV shopping in a long time, and hopefully, I still won't have to do it for a while. But that's just something that crossed my mind because my mother mentioned it with um, mm. her recent. TV issues and wanting to look look into a new system and she mentioned I think it was Sony that had something and they had a their own OS on it that made it smart but mm-hmm. you couldn't necessarily put an Android app on it and I was like oh but cuz that's not Android I don't think right you know, or it's not necessarily linked in with Google Play right right or, you know so, yep. and, and that was just something that sort of made her think a little bit more think twice about the next purchase sure but but my mom's is a nerd and different so i can't lump her in with the regular everyday consumer (laughs) yeah yeah fair enough fair enough all right flo you got the next one yep so uh, this is uh, let me start that over (laughs) this is an exciting piece of news if you're a motorola fan uh so motorola announced the motorola one hyper Yes. Get, hyper. Get hype. Woo. Get hyper. Yeah. Uh, All right. Six, <laughs> Woo. Motorola. Woo. Really hyper. Uh, time to go sugar play high. 6.5 inch, 2340 by 1080 display, 90% screen to body ratio. This is not like the Motorola phone that you are thinking of. The, get away from that idea of that utilitarian design that they kind of like stuck with. Like this is, this is, this is hyper. Okay. This is something hyper. new. To yeah. really take in. Uh, <laughs> pop-up selfie camera with a 32 megapixel lens, which results in quad pixel, eight megapixel sh- shots. Uh, we'll see how that performs. 45 watt USB-C hypercharging. Uh, but otherwise, the rest of the specs are kind of mid-range. So on the outside, it looks very hyper. It's having fun. It's where you know, it's the um, it's the equivalent of the candy kid at the rave, right? They're wearing a lot of like loud clothing. They're wearing the candy necklace around uh, their neck, you know. But on the inside, maybe they're not as like hyped up to be where they are, uh, <laughs> even though their outside says that they are. So Snapdragon 675 with 128 gigs of storage. So not too bad on that. Four gigs of RAM, 4,000 milliamp battery, nice 3.5 inch headphone port. So you are getting a jack with nice. this. Two rear cameras in addition to that pop-up. And the rear cameras are 64 megapixel main lens, which results in quad pixel 16 megapixel shots Mm. and an eight megapixel ultra wide lens because we officially live in a time where you absolutely cannot put out a phone without putting at least more, you know, more than one lens on there. Android 10 from the get-go and $400 available now. Uh, Now... 
<laughs> which isn't bad. So Motorola had announced at the Qualcomm Summit that in early 2020, it would return to premium phones that would integrate the new Snapdragon chips. Um, it also announced, I, I guess it, it wanted to go to Maui. So yeah, came to the, the Qualcomm Summit. That's the only reason Summit. they made announcements. They wanted to go to Maui. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. We, we have some announcements to make. Uh, also, <laughs> Motorola says it's been profitable five quarters in a row. So its current strategy, whatever it's been doing, has been working. That's what's up. We'll see. Um, I definitely think making a premium mid-range phone isn't a bad idea. Is this actually is this today's version of the feature phone from back in the days that we would see from LG and and That's whomever else? I feel like this is more than a feature phone. I love that price tag. Yeah. That's 400, although for not much more than that, you can get the 7 Pro right now, the OnePlus 7 Pro. Yeah. I mean, right now, you know, holiday season, price drops and all that. Yeah, uh, but that's 12 gigs of RAM. This only has four. Four yep. gigs. Which yeah. is... For not much culture. less, I guess, you know. Um, $400 price tag is also what you get the OnePlus 3T, mm. right? Yeah. Three... So... 3A, what? sorry, 3T. Yeah, I'm getting my things mixed up. 3A, there 3A. we go. The, the, the Pixel 3A, that's what I meant to say. 3A. I'm getting all of these things mixed up. $400 <laughs> Pixel 3A, which is possibly one of the best phones of the year. Bang for buck. Yes. Yeah. According to Android Police, it is, the 3A. That's right, they said that, yeah. I, and I would totally yeah. agree. I mean, it's uh, a fantastic phone. I know we talked about this. But the Motorola One is this particular brand. I'm trying to understand what Motorola is trying to do with it. I think the point of it is to offer varying like features at a lower price point. So basically going after that same mid-range market, but instead of offering like a G, an all-encompassing G or an all-encompassing E, like making the one where it kind of looks flagshipy, but you're just paying for the features that you really want. Is that my understanding? I think that makes sense. Now, what my concern with this is the camera. If you're going to have all of these quote unquote megapixels on this super mm -hmm. tiny sensor, um, mm -hmm. how is that chip going to handle that? Uh, I don't know if that's going to work out. Very that well. is a good, that is a good <laughs> uh, question to ask actually. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, what Motorola has been doing seems to be working for them. I'm happy to see them uh, kind of take take another stab at the kind of higher end devices and mm -hmm. see how that works. Um, it's kind of like they had to take a break. Like, you know what? Let's let's take a cool off period. Let's wait for the right <laughs> chipset, and then we'll dive back in. Apparently, the Snapdra uh, Snapdragon 865. Let's wait for our just the to right. Maui. Yeah, well, let's wait. Well, let's wait for our trip to Maui, and then we'll really decide what our what our premium strategy is. Uh, apparently, it, it went well. I'm going to try that with Mr. Laporte. I need to make an announcement. <laughs> yeah, can we go to Maui? Good. We need to. Anytime we need to make an announcement, we'll do it in Maui. We'll do it in Maui. Um, okay, this one's a little weird. Uh, Roberto Escobar. That's Pablo Escobar's brother. Pablo Escobar yes. is a notorious. Yes. It was a notorious. Uh, a kingpin, let's say, uh, mm -hmm. is in the smartphone business, apparently. Roberto is in the smartphone business officially. The Escobar Fold 1, uh, it is a foldable phone for a whopping $349. Wow. And actually, the design really reminds me of what we saw from the Royale FlexPi, mm -hmm. the kind of the first of the foldable generation that was before Samsung and it had the display that folds on the outside and it kind of looked kind of puckery. I remember that was a word that, that was thrown around Puck. on this show about the display. But this has a 7.8 inch flexible AMOLED display, 1920 by 1444, a Snapdragon 8 series chip, Android 9, six gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage. That's the $349 model or eight gigs of RAM, 512 gigs of storage for 499. Mm. It can only be purchased through the Escobar Incorporated website, which is definitely NSFW. So keep that in mind before you go there <laughs> while you're at work. I to say. Thank you. Uh, includes the phone, includes a free cover that actually also blocks RFID and free shipping worldwide. Uh, Roberto has said, quote, I've told many people that I would beat Apple and I will. 
I cut the networks and retailers to sell the customers phones that can fold for only three forty nine phones, which in stores cost thousands of dollars by Samsung and others. This is my goal to beat Apple and by doing it myself like I always have. Yeah, so he okay. put he foot the bill for this essentially is what he's saying. Sounds like it. Yeah. Um, he's gonna beat Apple. I, Hey, hats off to you for getting that price point down like that. Apparently, um, yeah. I, I, I'm curious to see who's going to buy in with it. Um, no one's going to buy Did in. he threaten those people for the price point? Because I just... <laughs> I, you know, that's just how it's a fair it. question, That's just actually. <laughs> <laughs> that is a fair question. Look at some of the promotional materials for this phone. Can somebody look into the working conditions of the people who yeah. agreed to help manufacture this phone? Because I don't know, guys. It's just... Fair question. Some of the marketing. I'm, I'm, I'm just warning you. If, if you if you go too deep on this phone, you start coming across some of their marketing materials, which are <laughs> kind of like disturbing. <laughs> so don't, don't look too deep unless you're prepared for that. But... Uh, almost to the point where I was like, ah, do I even put this in the rundown? But it's, it's, I'm glad you did. That's good news it's, though. I mean, well, I shouldn't say good at news. least that's the article I linked news. to is like a safe for work video. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, foldable phone, 349. You, you gotta be, you're, you're buying in on the Escobar brand. So and we just read about how much th was that Motorola phone just a few minutes ago? 400. 400. 400. Bucks. And this for has foldable. Right. And this has a foldable screen. If that's like your highest priority is I want my phone to have a foldable screen and fold out into tablet form factor, then I guess this is your choice. Well, I just think well, it's interesting. This is, you know, this is diversifying those bonds for Mr. Escobar, you know, making sure that his hands are in some tech pot somewhere and that Android was the vessel for that. Yeah. It's yeah. Serious. The easiest yeah. vessel, of course. Yeah, weird stuff. But Samsung does have a whole flippable, foldable phone thing that they're doing. Let's talk about that. Oh, Samsung. <sighs> yeah, I guess we're still talking about that. So Samsung is expensive. <laughs> this is why we need Ron on the show, because I'm just like, ah, yes. Uh, Samsung <laughs> is expected to unveil its clamshell foldable smartphone at its Galaxy S11 event early next year. Oh, so we'll and see you soon. As we know, next year is literally around the corner. What, like three weeks of this month left? Mm -hmm. yeah. And before we know it, well, CES is going to happen. And then folks are going to be on that plane to Barcelona. But before they do that, usually that's when Samsung does its big kahuna event and announces what's coming up next. And I think that clamshell, as uh, news, as the news is pointing to, will be a part of that. It will cost somewhere in the eight fifty range, which uh, is a lot less than the razor. It's cheaper. Well, a lot that's cheaper more than, than the than Escobar's. fold was. <laughs> um, cheaper than the fold was at launch. Uh, also, there's going to be an updated Galaxy Fold later in the year. So I don't know. This is still happening, apparently. <laughs> More, less than a razor, more than an Escobar. <laughs> <laughs> in, that, in, you, that, in that, right in the middle between that's sweet spots. That's how you sell it. <laughs> <laughs> so eight fifty, okay. That's that's more a price in line with I think what people might be interested in paying, just because that's closer to what people are paying for certain phones. Yeah. One the, can presume you have nice innards in it. Yeah, I would. I would hope so. It. Yeah. I would imagine so, but maybe they end up going with like a, like do what Motorola did. The design of the Motorola Razor is foldable and special and unique and different, but the innards are kind of mid rangey. Right. You know, maybe, maybe Samsung goes with the 765 instead of the 865 mm -hmm. Snapdragon processor. I don't know. But that remains mm. to be seen. We mm. shall see. Uh, all right, Victor, it's time for some apps. <laughs> Ah, uh, the, the jokes they write themselves when it comes to Google and messaging. Google is bringing messaging into Google Photos now. Um, although this actually makes a lot of sense. That's There's what you be... asked for, right? Did I ask for yeah, this? Yeah, I think you asked for messaging to be integrated into Photos. You know? Every app that Google owns <laughs> should have messaging of some sort. I think it makes sense. Might as well at this point. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but see which one sticks. It's like throwing spaghetti at the wall, see what sticks. Um 
So there's going to be a new share option to enable private messaging uh, within the Photos app for sharing photos and whatever else, really. It eliminates the need to create a new album to share. So um, so it kind of makes sense. Like, I do this a lot. I create, I go into my Google Photos, I create an album just to share, like, two photos with someone so that I don't have to, like, download it and then attach it. I just link to it and they can download it themselves. Right. Um so I suppose this makes sense as long as I know that the other person is in Google Photos. Like I want to know how they get that message, how they're going to notice that, is right. that better than what I'm doing right now. This is their message to, this is their answer to iMessage is what you're telling me, right? I don't know that, I don't think that's what I'm telling <laughs> no, you. No. <laughs> Pretty certain I'm not telling you I that. Just, no, I just don't, I, I just don't see the point in this myself. Yeah. Um, SMS works just fine. Um, yeah, but SMS is dying, and well, well, nobody, this is nobody just to told help. Google that. <laughs> this, is, this is to help streamline, you know, the whole process of selling, of uh, sharing photos and photo albums. Yeah. So it's not really messaging. It's just. But it, but it is messaging in the sense that it creates a a messaging. Uh, channel like mm -hmm. it's not only sharing photos you can chat back and forth so i mean technically it is messaging but it is really designed did for sharing this? photos you can think people. of it as posting did i have a beta like a fit like on a facebook post right. uh, like on a on a picture you're gonna uh, wow that was such a fun day haha <laughs> thanks for having us over here's, Heart here's emoji. The pictures of the boat is um, that what it's supposed to look like um I don't know. That looks like so something that it would look like. Yeah, I, I sent the test message if you want to see. I don't know if this is the actual iteration, but I sent a test message to Queen Pruitt just to see what happens, and I don't see the point in this myself. It's, I sent the picture with the little share button and yeah. wrote testing, and she replied back, one, two, three, as in she got it. But Okay. Um. Yeah. Do you, do the been, two of you share a a, a cloud photo kind of album? Because mm -mm. my wife and I—that's what we do. It's like one big united photo album, or you know, right? Photo account. Now I have a friend that did do that with me. They created an album and they add to it, and I can add to it. But no, we don't do that in in our home. This I literally just hit that little share button just to see what would happen and. So I guess what I'm asking is she doesn't see your photos. You don't see her photos unless you actively share them between right. each Correct. other. So if you don't do it this way, you're doing it through that it, and you want to share something with Queen Pruitt. Are you doing that through like text? I, I want to do it through, through text messaging mm -hmm. or like hangouts or something like that. Yeah. Or hangouts. Right. Okay. But I guess that's what this is supposed to look like. I don't know. Yeah. I, well, I if it's, so. if it's faster than hangouts, maybe that, cause like when I try to share to hangouts, it, takes a while to I maybe it's like downloading the photo and then yep. re uploading yep. it to Hangouts. Sometimes that takes a while. Huh. Didn't think about that either. Uh, I don't know. You know, Google just wants messaging every just every seems which like way. one more thing to confuse me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It does kind of remind me, didn't they add something to YouTube of like private like messaging? Yeah they did. YouTube, they had little chats I'm, in there. I was like, I guess that makes sense, but I man, that's something that I never use. Yeah, someone. So, I, I think my son. Someone must use it. Followed me. Well, he didn't subscribe to me. He followed me in there, and I remember getting a message from him sharing a video through that. That could uh -oh. have been just as simple through SMS. Yeah, you yeah. know, because I haven't been in that that service ever since then. Yeah, you know, right. <laughs> What's the? Point? Yeah, it didn't make much sense to me. All right, flow All assistant. Right. This is not messaging, but this is definitely going to make you jump for joy. All right. Uh, especially if you've been with the Google Assistant from inception. So Google is finally re-adding Google Keep support in Assistant after removing it a few years ago. Yes, that's right. If you'd adopted it back in late 2016, you might have remembered that this was a thing that you could do. And that's then for neat. some reason it mysteriously disappeared. Well, now it's back. So... Google has added it back to the assistant and also added support for any do, any dot do, any list and bring. 
And it's not just shopping list support, but any list, you pick the name in Assistant to create it and add to it. Lists will also appear on smart displays, which is super helpful. Yeah. The update is rolling out now. And then once the update is done, you should find notes and lists in the Assistant Services tab in Settings, which will replace the shopping list section. So it's not just for shopping. It's just for, you know, getting getting your your brain out there onto the binary paper. Getting your lists constructed. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it never really made sense when they took away the whole keep integration because it was it worked so well, <laughs> and then they undid it in favor I of why. they had a, a bigger Google checkout. Plan. Yeah, they wanted it to That'd integrate with Google Checkout, which is basically their like Amazon delivery mm -hmm. thing that nobody uses. That nobody uses, <laughs> and not only that, like the list. When it was with Keep, it integrated into the Keep app on your phone. Mm -hmm. When they switched mm -hmm. it to Google Checkout, you, to go to the list, it takes you to a web page where the checkout list is. And so it just felt really janky yeah, like for the, from the get-go, and it never got fixed. I, I, I did enjoy using Keep, but um, like you said, with some of those list functionality, it ended up being easier to just keep a Evernote open. Mm. Back in the day, so yeah, yeah, I use both, both for different things. <laughs> but yeah, good to see that that support added back in. Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, Craigslist. You may know Craigslist as that site that's been around forever, and uh, you can sell things on it, and it's very minimal and all that. Craigslist has never had an official app. That that is so <laughs> bizarre to me when I yeah. when I read this. It's like, wait a minute. Yeah, they've Why? never they've never had an official app until now. Dun dun dun. And on iOS, it's like an official release. On Google, it's a beta release, and it's uh, I don't think it's making a whole lot of people just in time for the happy. holiday season. Yeah, right? you're actually here. I'll show you the the remarkable design of the app. It kind of feels a little far away, but. Um, yeah, I mean, it's super straightforward. <laughs> like history, saved, uh, favorites. I don't know. I haven't really done a whole lot. Oh, I've got some things for sale, by the way. If you want an animated Santa with light, uh, there you go. Uh, <laughs> Wait, really? Yes. <laughs> How much? <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk or just search on Craigslist. You'll find it. Uh, so there it is, the most amazing Craigslist app. Uh, Burke doesn't want my animated Santa. You don't know what you're missing, Burke. <laughs> Talk to me seriously. That's fine, Burke. I think I've already claimed it. Although, do I have to come all the way to Petaluma to pick it up? <laughs> yes. That would be yes. You do. It's really big. Um, yes. Yeah, apparently people are, are like, I don't know. I don't know if it's that they think it's too minimal. I mean, it is. I actually made a posting with the app. And but really? The, the website is not minimal? Come yeah. on, people. What do you I, expect? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. The website looks like it's from, I don't know, like 98. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. They had to do it, though. Think about Let Go and like all those other apps where you just like snap a photo and post it. And then somebody's like, I'll be over in three hours to yeah. get that animated Santa. Yeah. Oh man. So that's a that's a channel that I need to uh, explore. Is what is it called? Let go. Let go. I mean, I've been looking into those because you know, track. after just moving, like half the garage is stuff that we are like, we should have a garage sale. Because <laughs> mm, you know, go. we're like, we don't need like half of this stuff. Oh, okay. And I'm trying to think about the best way to sell it. And you know, I am of the Craigslist generation. Yes. Just but, barely. I also haven't used it in years for anything. I've actually started using Nextdoor <laughs> for, to, se for to selling things? find things and oh. like, you know. Okay, I didn't realize like Nextdoor had that. Like to keep it local. That. I think a lot of people use Facebook, Facebook uh, Facebook groups, right? Uh, groups. Yeah, but that's for people who use Facebook. <laughs> right, well, and some, like I don't use Facebook, but some people will create an account that's only for that so they yeah. can get access to that. That um, makes sense. But yeah. I'm of the Craigslist generation as well, and I don't I don't necessarily enjoy Craigslist put, you know, posting. Before Craigslist, for me, it was eBay, and I like don't even take me yeah like, don't even come at me eBay. I can't stand selling anything or buying anything on eBay. Yeah, no, I found you. Craigslist never, never, to never. be a lot simpler. Yeah, back I used in the to days. date on Craigslist. <laughs> oh oh really? Oh really? Moving this right is, along. <laughs> This is this is interesting information. Well, <laughs> this is I this is pre 
pre apps and all this other yeah, stuff yeah. that happened. Yeah, and yeah, no. I put up a I put up a classified ad on Craigslist. It was free, and I was in college and Suddenly, single. And I just had a vision you? of Jeff Jarvis yelling, "What? <laughs> <laughs> Classifieds?" <laughs> Well, I, yes, I met my girlfriend uh, back in the day on IRC chat. So, you know, like dif different different generations of Internet. I met my husband on LimeJournal. So. <laughs> That's true. You did. <laughs> there we go. And now everybody knows far too much about us. Um, yeah, whatever. They've been watching this show long enough to know. <laughs> they, you know yeah, we've probably, we've probably talked on it. Yes. <laughs> Smart man. Smart years. Very smart. Uh, should we move on? Yeah, to we should. Flo, you something got the final a little one. more. Yes. So uh, recall last year when Epic Games kept Fortnite off of the Play Store to save itself the 30% cut that Google takes in in-app purchases. Now, remember, am I thinking Fortnite or am I thinking PUBG? Which was the one that came exclusively in the Samsung Galaxy App Store? Oh, I think it, uh, that was, oh, was that Fortnite? I think it was Fortnite. Yeah, I think it was. Um, well, anyway, Epic Games came back to Google to see if Fortnite could enter the Play Store with a billion exception. Please, please, Google, could we come back and play, please? So this would allow Fortnite to continue using its own billing system and not Google Play's, which is a total violation of the Google Play policy. CEO Tim Sweeney of Epic Games said, believe this form of tying it of a mandatory payment service with a 30% fee is illegal in the case of a distribution platform with over 50% market share. Google swiftly responded saying all developers are expected to participate under the same terms. That's and right. that's it. Rejected. So That's right. Google, tell it. <laughs> and I don't know that it's illegal considering that A, Google's a private company, B, Epic Games is a private company, C, neither of y'all are public. Nobody can vote on this. This is not like, yeah. oh, jeez. I accidentally, uh, I have too many smart displays around here. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, yeah. Yeah, he, he obviously wanted to like kind of challenge the system, possibly possibly pave the way for others to follow suit. And For 30%? Like I appreciate him trying, but still, this is the terms of, it, of the services. You, yeah, you, you can either true. take it or leave it. I don't care how big your britches are. Let yes, Google Epic. make money off of it. Who like? I don't care how Apple Epic gets to make money are. off of y'all. <laughs> Why doesn't like? <laughs> yeah, I just realized. I mean, y'all want to be a part of the free market. Like, just let it. This is what you deal with: terms and conditions. Yeah, yeah. So sorry, I guess people are gonna keep installing APKs and finding a way around this because I, you want your thirty percent. Well, yeah, and I wonder if this move was. For 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 Epic, was this about was this more about proving a point or wanting? I wonder if they're seeing up like to a, a flat new line, if they're plateauing a little bit. Like yeah, like like I'm curious. Proving about a point that, yeah. for what? It's it's Pro just right right. Like if, if they're comfortable with their Android usage numbers as is, and they did this just to like rub Google's face in it and, uh -huh. and prove some sort of a point or to po the possibility that Google comes around. Mm -hmm. Like, was it about that? Or like you're saying, Ed, are, are things kind of right. settling a little bit? All right, not as and much they're like, growth. oh, boy, we, need, we <laughs> actually need more users. If it was an indie developer, yeah. but this is a big game developer. Totally. That's why I don't totally. feel... I mean, why does Epic get to get to do this and not and no like one else does, yeah. an indie developer who's maybe worked on their game for like five years and, you know, good on you, Google, for maybe telling them no. maybe offers it for a dollar. Like, it's just not that's not fair, you know, yep. and if the independent folks have to uh, ascribe to these same terms and services, so should like a multi million dollar corporation like Epic Games like Dang, I'm right. Yep. Sorry. I don't feel bad. <laughs> Agreed. <how> feel. Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to Stamp everyone who wants to play Fortnite <laughs> on their phone. <laughs> Look, you can still install it. You just have to install an APK and risk yeah. all that that entails. Uh, okay. And now it's time to jump into the arena. Let's hop in. Okay. <laughs> so many enter, <laughs> but only one lives. Android Arena! 
Last week's poll, twit.to slash AAA poll 449 is where people went to vote on their favorite app of the week. And it turns out that Tile Shortcuts won first place. Oh, that's me. 60% (laughs) Flo, this is your year. I have to imagine, have we already hit the point? We've already hit the point to where you're just assured the win. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I don't know. I'm just. Ron still has hope, though. (laughs) <laughs> right, yeah. Ron still thinks it's possible. Uh, of course, he did uh, enter the arena with an app called Nude. Twenty-five uh, percent of the vote that didn't work out so nice so try. well for him. Nice try. Third place, <laughs> Ali Pay. That was team guest with Mateo at fourteen percent. I even sign up for that thing, by the way, with my Google Voice number and everything. I like. I'm in the system now. I'm in oh the Ali no! Pay system. Sorry about that. Um, no, I did it. I did it on my own accord. Didn't understand anything. It's all in Mandarin, but that's okay. We'll see what happens over the course of the next year. Uh, Wade County has the results. Not that it matters much, Flo. I, I, you, I mean, that has been determined, right? You've you've sealed the the win at this point. Have we made that announcement? Is I that don't want to make it yet. Let's wait until the end of the year. It's not fair. No, rub Let's... his nose in it. Go ahead. I just don't. I don't I don't want to do that. I think we should just wait. We still have a couple what two more sho- shows to do. So Okay. Let's, you know. So then uh, you all, right. all right. If you're saying there's a chance, there's a chance. So week 48 flow is at 159. Listen, next year I'm going to be probably missing for a little bit. So, that's, you know, I'm that's trying true. to get in my you know. <laughs> that's true. Okay. And to Ron's credit, uh, he was missing a little bit this year too for a very similar reason. So mm-hmm. you know, this is what happens. This is what yeah. happens. I got when... mine out of the way a long time ago, it, early <laughs> early days of all about Android. Note so. to self: Don't drink what Ron and Flo drink. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that would be the uh, birthing pool <laughs> we're drinking from. <laughs> you also got yours out of the way a long time mm-hmm. ago. Uh, Flo one fifty nine, guests one twenty five, Ron at one oh eight. And me, oof, boy, 98. I'm really far back in last place. You're not even a caboose. <laughs> no, you're Jeez. right. I'm like, I'm like hanging out on the track waiting for the next train to roll me over. Man. So uh, so my app this week is actually a game. It's called Zentris. It is a puzzle game. Um, something about that shot that feels like, like an over the overhead like google pixel you know like their product announcements with Mm -hmm. the table and the stuff anyways uh so this is zentris and the idea with zentris is you know a lot of kind of the uh the kind of gameplay structure or uh, or approach of tetris let's say but on a flat plane and uh i can't remember if there's any of course there's soft plinky smooth music playing because it's zentris but um, so you have your play field, you can, you can swap it, you know, left and right in order to get the right angle and you get your play pieces down here so I can tap it and I can drop it, go ahead and drop it right there. And I get a new kind of selection of play pieces. Um, basically you want to find a place that these stack, as you can see, some of them stack tall, others do not. You're looking to do in the normal kind of like Tetris uh, you know, gameplay mechanic. You want to complete a line all the way across. I should have set myself up with something a little bit easier because neither of these pieces can be played. And you can see I have to end the game because I reached the end oh. essentially. Oh. <laughs> I thought I was setting it up for like in the middle of a game that would be interesting, but I I set myself up for uh, too complicated. So here's a, an even playing field. I can go ahead and and plop these out, and you'll see when I. When I complete it, it drops out. So you can kind of see as the as the playboard builds up, things get more difficult. And if you, as you saw with the last game, if you hit a point where you can't actually play a piece based on what you have in the layout, then your game is over. You do have some power-ups. Um, if, let's say, I'm going to see here. I want to get to a, a multi-layered thing here, and I'm not sure I'll be able to on a, on the quick. But... This little blue thing actually drills down. So if I had a stack and I wanted to get rid of it, I could drop it there and it would go and it would plow it all the way down. Um, you can do undos if you have these little uh, these little diamonds built up. 
I've paid $1.99, which gives me 20 diamonds and removes all ads. So any purchase, any in-app purchase removes the ads. Otherwise, it is free, but you get kind of the ads in between your games, and that might be obnoxious to you. It is to me. Uh, so I remove the ads, but you can you can buy more of those undos as well. That allows you to kind of go backwards and undo your play. But you can see uh, if I wanted to, I could rotate and play these differently. Boom, those two go away. And it's just kind of a cool gameplay mechanic. Uh, definitely is kind of a relaxing game Oops, uh, to, to thumb through. And now I'm starting to get those kind of like the towers building up and everything. Now you have to uh, concentrate. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now I'm at the point to where I, I can't review and play at the same time. Um, this, I don't have it right now, but it's basically a piece that when you have it, you can drop it and a number of the, the pieces around it kind of evis you know, evaporate, they disappear. So it's another kind of like power-up sort of thing that, that gets rid of a bunch of pieces. But um, I like the approach here. It's a nice, calm, gentle, um, Tetris-like puzzle game. Uh, and it's called Zentris. And there it is free, but you can do an in-app purchase starting at $1.99. That gets you those undos and removes, ultimately, the ads in the game. And, uh, yeah, you should check it out. It's a, it's a very cool game and very soothing. So with the name like that, you can't get angry at it. No, you better not get angry <laughs> at it. It looks Zentris. pretty cool, though. Yeah, it's fun. It's gonna, you're going to kill some time when you're traveling on, on an airplane or something with that one. All right, Ant, you are up next. All what right. What is your app, and why do you like it so dang much? Well, my <laughs> app is nowhere near as fun as yours. It's more of a service. It's okay. called Buffer.com. And the reason I went with that, because I think it was like the fourth quarter of 2017, I decided to be a little bit more serious about my social media management because I was trying to grow my local business and... I've learned that the more that I put in social media, the more the signal was boosted, the more I could point potential customers to it. They would see yeah. things, they would interact. So I was doing that pretty regularly. But if you look at any of these popular influencers or what have you out there, most of those folks have social media teams because um, mm -hmm. it's a lot of work to manage your social media. So I went into Buffer and Buffer allows me to hop in here each and every day usually at about, I don't know, 5, 6 a.m. in the morning. And I can schedule out um, tweets. I can schedule out posts to LinkedIn. I can schedule out posts to Instagram. Um, and they will go out uh, at random times that I could set up uh, based on just from things that I've learned from different analytics in the past as far as, all right, when did this get the type of, uh, whoop, can you oh, see yeah. the screen there? Yeah, here. Probably should turn I'll, the I'll brightness go like up. This. I'll go like this. Do I need to turn the brightness up? Uh, sure. Yeah. There we go. Here, I'll go like this so I can keep it out of the reflection. No, oh, thank you. So, but, reflection. but what you see there, that is my Twitter queue, and that is a queue of tweets that are going to go out, you know, but starting at 7 12 p.m. Pacific time, wow. and then another one at some other random time a couple hours later. And that allows me to at least keep the signal going in there. Now, granted, there's a caveat because people are going to think uh, he doesn't care. He's just a bot posting automatically. <laughs> um, yeah, there is that. But at the same time, I do try to go in and look at those posts as they go up and try to interact to people with people if they're reacting to them. Um, oh, okay. So it's still a little bit of work for me, but not as much work <laughs> tweeting, you know, on a regular basis, because mm -hmm. before I came to twit, I was an IT guy. And I worked a lot of hours in a day and it was really hard to do my social media and prospecting for my small business in addition to making sure um, this informants database wasn't thrown up on everybody. Uh, but you can connect LinkedIn, you can connect Instagram, you can connect uh, Twitter, Facebook. I just use Instagram, LinkedIn and um, Twitter and it'll automatically let you put um, images if you want. You can put video links, uh, and if you don't want to wait, you can just go ahead and tell it to share it right now if you want. Uh, but it, it's really good on helping keeping your signal boosted, if you will. Huh. There, this is a free service, but if you want to do the paid service, which I can't remember how much it costs now, the paid service allows you to, to jump into some more analytics and see, you know, what kind of reach you're getting. 
Uh, it'll give you a couple extra t statistics and so forth. But what I like here is like the schedule and it lets you know, you, know um, you can set up what time zones and what time of day. And if you clicked on these, you can see Monday through Friday, you want to post at a specific time versus not the same time on the weekends because people get different reach and different analytics mm -hmm. on the weekend versus a Tuesday afternoon. You know, so it's a lot of strategy in this that could be useful for people trying to help grow their brand and help, you know, grow their businesses. And uh, I've liked Buffer. It's been pretty successful for me. I've been able to grow my following, been able to grow my uh, um, audience on there in general. And it keeps people coming back and it keeps people engaged. Nice. Like that a lot. That's <laughs> that's really powerful. Uh, that is called Buffer. Not as fun, but mm. it's quite useful. And the shortened URL for um, the links and stuff is buff. Right. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so that's cool, too. <laughs> Buff.ly. Uh, that is Buffer. Check it out. Nice pick. All right, Flo, I have your app installed. Tell us a little bit about it. While I get By the on. way, Ant, I love Buffer. I've been using it for years. All right. It's, it's you know, it's a very good app. Yep. Um, as for my app, so I kind of, I think Jason and I stuck to a bit of a theme with relaxing games for this particular episode. <laughs> um, I am nearing the end of my time incubating and it's getting harder and harder for me to sleep. Lots of anxiety, uh, pulsating through me. And so I've been looking for actually relaxing games to kind of help like chill out before bed because uh, Animal Crossing just doesn't do it anymore for me. <laughs> so also they keep charging for like everything in the game, which is like, this is getting ridiculous. So Jason, if you wouldn't mind turning the volume way up on this, I mean, this is a musical game. It's called Harmony Colin Relaxing Music Puzzles. It's by Infinity Games and it's actually a play pass offering. Oh, okay. Which of course is how I found it because yeah, I'm, paying for the play pass and I'm sticking my nose in there a couple times every few weeks to kind of see what's new and what I want to check out. It's also an editor's choice. So pretty well rated. So, uh, Jason, if you wouldn't mind going back okay. <laughs> somehow, no, he heard the piano chords and was, hooked. yeah. <laughs> um, I respect that you want to play piano, but I was wondering if you could do the flute one the just because that's what I, prefer okay uh yeah the the flute okay there we go so the object of this game is you tap and it makes music so go ahead jason and jump back in and now what you have to do is this line will show up and so your job is to mirror the squares on the other side of the line to complete the tune oh jeez Y'all are right. really going to you, sleep. And then, uh, and then tap so below zen. to continue the next one. Yeah. And it doesn't matter what order you tap them in, as long as you get the pattern right, as long as you're matching what's on the other side of the mirror. Because what the game is going to do is it's going to fill out the melody for you. And the melody is always going to sound melodious. So it's not going to sound atonal or like it doesn't work together. It's going to be in the relaxing instruments that are a part of this. It's, I like the pan flute. For me, that is, you know, a beacon of relaxation, I guess you could say. Wow. That's what, I, maybe it's my Romanian heritage. I don't know. We have a lot of pan flute in our music. Uh, but it is, it, it is really a relaxing game. And the thing about this is it's going to get harder and harder the more Jason advances, but it's not hard where you get frustrated. It's like, you know, I really just need to concentrate because my brain is all sorts of like anxious right now. And so now what's going to happen, Jason, is you need to, you need to mirror the bottom part with the top part of above the mirror, above the line. Yeah, exactly. So that's how it like gets harder. So it'll like in increase the mirroring and uh, the ways that you'll have to like mirror things. And uh, I guess you could try another instrument if you want. <laughs> I'll <laughs> allow it. <laughs> Ooh, that is really... Uh... So there are several instruments available. Um, you can start with the piano, but you can 
you can always choose any of the instruments that um, we're kind of playing around here. Um, there is there are boss levels that are supposed to help <laughs> relax you. So maybe you don't think of boss levels when you're thinking of relaxation, but the idea is to get your brain just kind of focused. And then the reward is this really melodious sound that is nice and relaxing. So, you know, it really has been helping a little bit with my anxiety and, um, and I appreciate stuff like this. That's so really cool. I thought it was a really clever, clever way to get me to focus on something else while also, um, being a part of like the, you know, the relaxation ethos, so to speak. Oh, sorry, so. I got to fail once. Hold on. <laughs> Oop. There we go. That's what happens when you fail. <laughs> Dale Poco is taking me to task for not failing. <laughs> sorry, I'm too good. Oh, okay. <laughs> it gives you little hints. I oh, didn't I use any hints. <laughs> now, I wonder... Uh, someone with ADD. Would you recommend this? Um, I mean, I have not been diagnosed with ADD, but I definitely have problem paying attention, and this helps. But I see how it's <laughs> how it's forcing you to focus. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it definitely. That's that's kind of why at first I was like, oh god, do I really want to do this? But the payoff is the the melodious chimes. You know, yeah. it's just and and you have the tapping mechanism, which is what really relaxes me, mm -hmm. like just to be able to like tap on screen. Um, so I found it in that way. It helps me because otherwise my brain is just going. I mean, especially right now, I'm like, mm -hmm. uh, it's it's a lot. Um, so I'm just looking up games like this in the Play Store. And you can actually if you don't have a Play Pass, you could still pay to remove ads. So mm -hmm. Uh, but you can't skip ahead. You need to. You need to get your relaxation in. This is in, pretty cool. By levels. We just got to keep Mr. Howell on tempo. <clears throat> I could see. I could see actually Jason enjoying something like this, which uh, is yeah. why I also brought it. I love it. I love and it. actually, That's Jason, your Zentris app was suggested when I went to the app page for this earlier today on my account. Oh, was it? Oh, wow. Yeah. We are connected, Flo. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're we're both trying to chill out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> awesome. So that is harmony, relaxing music puzzles. And if you are, um, if you are on the play pass train, uh, this is included. Otherwise, check it out. I think there's a there's a fee to remove the ads, but mm -hmm. I'm not sure what that is. But harmony, relaxing music puzzles. All right, twit.to slash AAA poll 450 is where you can go to place your vote for your favorite app this week. Is it Zentris, Harmony, or Buffer? Place your vote like Victor is about to do. He will demonstrate with Harmony. Victor also vote. needs to chill out for the holiday season, huh? Yep. <laughs> yep. We should all chill out just a little bit for the holiday season. One day. Twit.to slash AAA poll 450. Uh, Ant never allows himself to chill nope. out. No such thing. It's no, always, I I it's always <laughs> things yeah, I was about to say, Every time I see Ant on Instagram, he's like in his living room with his feet up yep. and he's like end of the night, like drink. Yep. I see you. So you relax at the end of the day. <laughs> Every daggum day. <laughs> That's the way it should be. Very quite frankly. nice. Very nice. Uh, and thanks for hopping on today. It's thanks always for having a me. pleasure having you on this show. And thanks for taking time out of your evening. My pleasure. Uh, you could be kicking your feet up right now. Yeah, but exactly. Instead you're on this show. No, you, no you, you're still under the wire, so you're good. Okay, you're all good. right. Good, good. <laughs> uh, what do you want to leave people with? Um, be sure to check out Hands On Photography and Focus On Photography each and every Thursday here on the network. Having a lot of fun doing our little tutorials on Hands On Photography, also known as HOP. Uh, but Focus on Photography has been a lot of fun having some round uh, roundtable discussions with my man, Michael Woolsey, and our guests last week. And we've got another good guest scheduled this week. Um, definitely tune in for the live show. Uh, that is 9 a.m. Pacific time. So tune in to uh, catch our live guests on Thursday. It's going to be fun. Nice. Right on. And that is uh, Focus on Photography. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thanks again, Ant. And what about you, Flo? 
Uh, well, I just want to say, Ant, I have been enjoying your little tutorials online. So thank you for showing me things that I can do oh, with Photoshop and Lightroom. Uh, and also I have a suggestion for you after the show. Sure. So just, you know, uh, as for me, I'm just trying to stay awake <laughs> through <laughs> these last two months of, again, incubating. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, in, in the midst of all that, I am working as you know, as much as I can in spurts. And so, uh, hopefully I will be able to update florencelion.com this week, the flow feed. Hopefully you will be seeing a new podcast episode from me for honestly tech at honestly Um, I'm trying, I'm setting a goal for myself to try and get as many done as I possibly can before, uh, the new member of my family arrives. Okay. So we'll see how, We'll see how that works. Yeah. Um, this, this this part of the journey isn't it called nesting? It's nesting is it's like the last. The, so I did I <laughs> did buy nesting. the I did buy the Google product or I, I have the Google products upstairs in that room, but it needs to be put together. And but I also need furniture. <laughs> <laughs> so I got the Google stuff and the smart bulbs and everything. Yeah. Because I'm like, oh, I'm going to create this like relaxing environment so I don't have to rely on like the Fisher Price toys to do it. You know, like I can just like control it. Yeah. Uh, and then I forgot that I need to buy furniture. That's a brilliant oh, strategy. Oh, OK. Well, you know, what's a good app for buying furniture Oops. if 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 you don't have any other options is Craigslist. And they have a new app <laughs> that you can check yes. out. You might find something on there. Good call. Good call. Uh, so that's it. <laughs> that's all, right. all for me. Cool. Thank you, Flo. Good to see you. And thank you, Victor. Thank you for pushing the buttons, occasionally laughing at our jokes. We appreciate you. Occasionally. occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> that, Sometimes dude. leaving us high and dry, but that's okay. <laughs> well, he put in a lot of work last week. Yeah. So everyone give Victor a break because he put in a lot of work into the shtick last week and he <laughs> really, really and when I he found really out got Ron was going. Gonna, when I found out Ant was going to be on today, I was trying to figure out a way to put like wild like cameras or something. <laughs> around or whatever. Every wow. guest is going to get their own like Little array of, yeah. of special <laughs> stuff. Well, thank you, Victor, for doing for caring as much as you do. We really appreciate it. Word. Um, you can find me here at Twit uh, doing Tech News Weekly on Thursday, so that's my big thing there. Um, still working on guests for that, but you know that's how it goes with Tech News Weekly. As you know, mm -hmm. you in. thank you for and it's an interesting time of the year too. Though, yeah, so I know, so right? Tough. It's not not always so easy, but twit.tv slash tnw for that. Uh, but that's it for this week for this show. This podcast publishes every Tuesday in the evening. Victor gets it all edited and ready and published. So a few hours after we finish the live show, it appears in the podcast feed. Go to twit.tv slash aaa. That is where you can find all the links to subscribe to the show. If you're not already subscribed, you should definitely do it. Uh, every link that you need is there or, you know, uh, subscribe to it in YouTube, podcatchers of, of your choice, whatever you need. It's all there. You can also play the, the video and the audio on the page if you prefer to do that. Everything you need to know is there. Twitch.tv slash AAA. And what a... What a goat that is. Goats for, and all. For last week. <laughs> That's right. Uh, and finally, you can find Twit on the socials, of course. Twitter, at Twit. Instagram, twit.tv. Apparently, we're on TikTok now. It's Twit Talk. Yeah, oh, you are. <laughs> Apparently we're, uh, I'm not on t on TikTok. Not I feel like I need to get a, a TikTok account. Well, you are, because I... Yeah. I am through right, Twit. but you're not, you're but not, I'm not on it. like me seeing it you're with my proxy. own eyes. <laughs> yes, exactly. So apparently we're there now. You know, we're everywhere you oh, are. <laughs> but that's it for this week. We'll see you next week on another episode of All About Android. Bye, everybody. <laughs>